existentialism. Connor Breger, Jill Shirey, Anna Hattin, and Ellery Day. That doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. Just <laughs> Double kill. Oh. <laughs> Tenets of existentialism. So I'm going to like explain kind of what existentialism is, and then Joe is going to um, explain kind of the origins of it. So, okay. Tenets of existentialism. One of the main tenets of, ex of existentialism is that essence precedes existence, or, or existence precedes essence. This means that a person's actions defines them, not pre-existing conditions. For example, a doctor is a doctor because they heal and help people, not because they were born a doctor. A second tenet of existentialism is that humans have free will. Individuals are solely, are solely responsible for their own selves, not for a higher power, not uh, a higher power or order. A, ter a third tenet is that life is dynamic. Life has no order. Instead, life is just a chain of consecutive decisions and actions. And then, so when I, so apparently when we transferred it from Keynote, which when I made it on to actual PowerPoint, the slides got a little bit unproportional, but still, right? And then some of the um, existential ideas of Jean Paul Sartre. He was one of the founders and main developers of the theory on existentialism. And one of the ideas is subject rather than object. Humans are not objects to be used by God or society or other groups of people. The power to create oneself. Everyone has the power to transform themselves from nothing. And they can continually change themselves too. Subjectivity. One cannot pass beyond subjectivity and thus look someone and then must look at uh, through someone else's life. Everyone's own lives uh, determine the way they look at things, so it's kind of impossible to take a look at someone else's or take a walk at someone else's shoes, according to existentialism. The human condition, regardless of different historical situations and rules, every single person has to be in the world, work, and eventually die there. So everyone, depend, no matter what their um, situation is, everyone has the same kind of basic life and end, which is death. Despair. A person can only control certain things in his life. There are other things that are very important, yet beyond one's control. So you can't change everything in your life, and that makes some people, some people like nervous and despair about that. And passion is no excuse. The last one. Um, um, that just means that like being in the heat of the moment is no excuse for um, doing something bad, like committing a murder or something, which is kind of related to the stranger, obviously. And then absurdism is similar to existentialism, but it's not the exact same. Absurdism is a philosophical school of thought stating that the efforts of humanity to find inherent meaning will ultimately fail and hence are absurd because the sheer amount of information, including the vast unknown, makes certainty impossible. People may create meaning in their own lives, which may or, may, which may, or may not be the objective meaning of life, but still provide something for which to strive. And that's just kind of the basic underlying themes of um, absurd, absurdism. And that's what Camus said that he was an observist. And then the origins of existentialism. The term existentialism was first stated by French philosopher Gabriel Marcel in the mid 1940s. Uh, Soren Kierkegaard was the first philosopher to actually consider, um, was actually like one of the first writers that was considered to write about existentialism. And existentialism really started to come out post-World War II because there was an upsurgence in the interest of a rising generation of philosophic ideas concerned with existential approaches to life. And then existentialism was born 
first started up, it got really big after World War II, and that's when people first started to take an interest in it. But it was born as a philosophical response to the crisis of World War I, and that's because after all this death and all this war, people were really questioning like certain aspects of life, like the whys and whats. And another prominent figure is Martin Heidegger. He, was, he wrote about existentialism and went more in-depth into it. And a philosopher of irrationalism, Heidegger maintained the main obstacle to human self-development was reason and science, which he claimed led to a view of humans only as objects of impersonality and manipulation. And that kind of goes along with existentialism because it's just like, we shouldn't really care about reason and science, like the hows of like how things happen and how we came about. It's like it doesn't really matter as much as now and like just living. And then that was it. It was kinda hard to find stuff on the origins just because like there's not as much information on it, but the main points are just like it was it came about in France during World War uh, during World War One right after and then into World War Two. And after World War II is when they really started to study it. Can any of you like, maybe explain why like, it might have happened during World War I and then World War II? Do you guys have any ideas like why it started then? Hmm. It's just like um, going back to knowledge about the war, a lot of people felt, especially um, in Germany, after um, after the war was that they were very they were in a downward spot, like they were in a terrible economic depression. Many people had lost hope and were bitter at other countries during the war. So they could have thought, well, if this horrible war happened and our country is in ruins now, nothing like must matter. So that it could have stemmed from kind of the hopelessness of the war. Also, I think um, <clears throat> maybe like they saw what, like what happened, like the terrible things that happened, and they realized that why. Like why things happen, like Joe said, why things happen doesn't really matter if you're so focused on that then you're missing like like the life you're living kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. They also could have used it to justify some of the things that they did, like mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter what we're doing, so yeah. That's a good point. Okay. I also think perhaps that when you and this is kind of going off what Grace said, when you um, say these horrible things are happening and then you kind of remove God because you're like, how could God do this? Yeah. And when you remove something, you have to replace it with something. So if there is no God, then there is no real meaning to life. And I think it kind of is a, a blow off that. Yeah, definitely. I think it makes a lot of sense that the whole movement began during this time. Nature also plays a big role in existentialism, and it's very prevalent in The Stranger. Um, we first see nature, um, it's the focus on the physical world, and we see this with Marceau. He sees the physical world more than, more than the emotional world. He focuses on like what he feels, such as like heat, and he focuses on what he sees, such as bright light. And this focus on the physical world ties into the belief that there's no higher meaning or order to life. Um, life is just uh, merely a series of events, and it's chaotic, which is existential. Also, there's no definable truth or absolute certainty, and this goes back to the idea that there's no order in the world. And we see that when Rousseau's um, experiencing nature in a negative way, he's usually experiencing intense emotions. Every time nature is affecting him, um, like whether he's on the beach or in jail or at his mom's funeral, um, he's going through some rough times. And this effect of the sun and heat could represent his inner state of mind. Also, um, as Connor said, Sartre's choice is one of the tenets, and Sartre was a French existentialist philosopher. Um, and his comment about choice is that everything in life is a choice. There's always like two sides, and you can't not choose. And we see this when Rousseau is debating whether he should shoot the Arab or not. And this picture says life isn't about finding yourself, life is about creating yourself. And this is an existential belief um, because there's, since there's no higher meaning or order to life, then every action you do just builds your character. So can you guys think of times when Marceau is affected by nature? Well, obviously when he uh, goes to kill the air, when the sun 